All right, guys, welcome back to DTEC. Um, today we are working on a couple of DMEs, um, essentially just one, but uh, I've got one here for practice. Uh, this is for a BMW, I believe it's 2010, 335. It's got the N54 and it's the MSD81 uh, DME. Now this is kind of a long story or a situation with this particular customer and situation. Uh, originally, he brought me this DME uh, to create a clone because this one just had internal fault and wouldn't start the car. The thing that he was particular about, this car is modified, has a tune, which was in this DME. So he was wanting to see if we can keep the tune when making a clone. So uh, I ended up using the OBD Star uh, right this same way to bench pulled the info, saved it, transferred it over to a used one, and made a clone. Uh, the, the customer then took the DME, which was this one actually, started the car, everything was fine and dandy. He is at the point where he's wanting to make some changes in the tune, but the tune has a lock on it, and he cannot make any changes, and the tuner won't give him the code or something like that to be able to make changes. So I told him... Basically, the next best thing is to start fresh with basically a DME that does not have a tune. It's not locked, and he can go from there and load up any tune or do whatever he wants from there. So basically, a fresh stock, you know, stock map, stock everything DME, and we just have to clone it over. The problem is I can't just clone and clone and clone because the file I have for his car has the tune on it. Again, that came out of this one. So I have the file from the donor because I just, I saved it before cloning it. And so what I want to do is take that stock file and load that up into back into this, but change the ISN number. Now, the ISN number is an ID number that's particular to all DMEs, and it matches other modules on the car, and that's how it's able to um, work together with matching numbers and grant access to start the vehicle. This is basically kind of like an immobilizer. It's called the CAS module. It stores uh, the keys and all that, and it has an ISN number. So this ISN number has to match this one in order for the car to start. So if I put the donor file, change the ISN in here, we should be able to start the car and he'll be able to start fresh with a stock map and do whatever he wants with this one. The problem is most people tend to read the ISN number and then change that ISN number to match the donor um, DME. I don't want to do that. I don't want to change and get rid of the original ISN number that the car was built with. So I want to change the ISN of the donor, keep it with the original ISN that the car came with. And in order to do that, you have to, there's a couple ways and that's what I'm playing around with here. Um, uh, clearly I've got the OBD star and the Autel IM608. In order for the 608 to do it, which I wasn't sure if it had the ability to do so, and poking around I came up with this menu where it says not only read the ISN, but supposedly gives me the ability to write the ISN. So in order to do that with Autel, you have to do bench with the boot, and you have to solder in extra resistors in order to perform this work. If you want to use the uh, OBD star, this can only pull and store the file. You can't, um, there's no options to just re write over the ISN. It'll let you read it, but it won't let you change it. And so what you could do either on the tool or off the um onto a an editor on a laptop this does have an editor there 
um, you can load it up, find the ISN, and then change the ISN number to the one you want to uh, write, which would be the original, then load it back up and then feed that file that way. So a couple extra steps this way and a couple extra bit of work this way. Now I want to see if messing around with both of these will let me do it. All right, we'll go ahead and start from the beginning here with the Autel. Um, let me power up the G-Box. I've got my connections obviously already made there. Now, uh, let's see, uh, system selection. Alright, so this will be my first attempt uh, with the Autel to pull and read the ISN. Let's see. So, no success. Let's try again. Alright, so clearly we are not getting in and pulling the ISN. Um, the other day, when I was messing around, I did find a, a place in there, and I can show you where it was an option just to read the ISN through bench kinda like the OBD star um, nothing boot wise but it was just to read and when it read it it actually gave me a which I took a screenshot a password with it so that screen came up when I read it with the Autel via just the bench now, I wasn't sure what that password was, but being that uh, it was what it was, I obviously took a screenshot. So I'm wondering if you're supposed to read it through Bench, not boot, pull up this password, and then um, go ahead and try to read how we were doing. So it's, it's odd, but let's go ahead and try to input that password. Yes. And... All right, let's see if this uh, this works. It's doing something. It'd been nice to know or been told. Uh, that you need that password. Luckily, I said the other day I was reading it uh, and retrieved that. So let's hit yes. Okay, so there's the ISN. We've got it saved. All right, guys. So basically, again, I'm, I'm trying to learn and check my tooling find out capabilities, so on and so forth. So what I've done, so I'm going to do a couple extra steps because, again, I just want to see what tooling can do what. I've gone ahead and desoldered the um, resistors kind of out of boot mode, and I've got the OVD star connected. I'm going to feed into it a different file, so different... Uh, VIN number, ISN uh, into this computer because I then want to go ahead and use a Autel to write back the ISN and file that we just recovered and saved. So I'm going to make this into something else and turn it back into what I just read. And by doing that, I'll use this to feed another file. Obviously, got my connections. Let's go ahead and start with the OBD star.
All right, so now that this one has basically become a different uh, file DME with a, a different flash in ISN, um, I just wanted to show you where I went before to get that password. So um, we'll start kind of from the beginning. And so we're going to read the ISN on bench here. No boot mode, the, the uh, resistors are still disconnected. We'll do bench instead of boot, we did bench, E chassis. So this, this tells you how to make your connections. And so the only option when you pick bench is to just read ISN. And let me make sure I'm connected, which we are. Let's go ahead. So this, I guess, needs to be done beforehand if you're wanting to change the ISN in boot mode to get that uh, password. Alright, there we go. Uh, first foremost, you can tell that yes, it is a different uh, ISN, just like how when we read it off uh, with that one. This was the original um, ISN that was in it, so we've retrieved that, and then that is where we get that code. So, there you go. So, from here on out, with this tool, I am going to go ahead and basically overwrite, change this with the right procedure in boot mode. And so as far as this one goes with this tooling, um, clearly I already had this file saved in the tool. I moved it over, I changed the ISN on the editor here, uh, loaded it back up so it's stored here in the tool let's uh i'll show you okay right there so there we go at the bottom with new isn so all i have to do is just regular standard writing um with the tooling put it in here and then um that should convert this this one also uh, to be able to be used in the vehicle all right so now we are back with a boot mode I've got all the resistors put back in uh, made my connections uh, oddly enough these connections on the bench um, they're different in, from the uh, regular bench to the boot there's a, a ground that it's a different spot and it asks for ignition, not 12 hot all the time. So just something to keep in mind. Um, so we are ready to perform a write. So we're going to convert it back to what it was with a file that we read from it originally. Let's see. I should only have one. All right, so I'll write down this ISN and then get back to that menu. Let's see what happens. I don't know which password it's asking for meaning so I'm trying to load the ISN which would have a different password than the one that's currently in there so maybe I'll try the one that's currently in there
All right, let's see what happens. All right. Let's try the other one. The one that's coming with the ISN. All right, looks like, so it asked for what current ISN, and then it asked for a password of the ISN you're bringing into it in order for it to uh, to work, I guess. <laughs> there we go. So we, at this moment, supposedly have written the ISN uh, into it. Uh, this would be the procedure for doing it with the Autel. All right, lastly, uh, I've got the resistors unsoldered, uh, changed the pins. I'm gonna go ahead and do just a bench read of the ISN. We should get the original one. And just curious to see which password. I'm assuming the passwords go along with the ISN, so it should be the same password. This will just help us verify. Well, um, well, might need this. All right, let's give that a shot again. Well, 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 looks like uh, we've run into an issue. Um, even though it told us it successfully wrote the ISN, um, it looks like it hasn't. What's weird is the password transferred over to this ISN, which is the one not originally um, written. So this is the one that we fed into it with the OBD star as far as the ISN. So it, it did not change. So that's that's uh, odd or disappointing, but uh, definitely reason why I am testing. If you remember in the beginning, I was talking about testing the tooling. I want to see the abilities. So that uh, that was very unexpected. So um, I think for now I'm going to put the Autel and this one aside and see if this method works. All right, let's uh, let's give this one a shot. All right, so on this one, all we've got to do is write the modified flash. Let's retrieve that. All right, so it's starting the process. Looks like there's 13 sectors that it needs to um, go over, write. Uh, if sectors are the same, it'll skip it. But um, I'll let this run and get you back once it's over, uh, once completed with the writing, and then we'll have to reread the ISN, see if it changed. Actually, we'll just read the ISN just to... Uh, Verify that uh, we can pull the ISN and we know that um, it should be the one that we uh, edited in the hex.
All right, uh, supposedly another successful write, uh, this one with the OBD star. So what we can do now is uh, just to uh, verify, let's pull the ISN. So 921, that is the original ISN. So what that tells me is that I correctly changed it on the uh, through the data on the uh, hex editor. So with that, we were able to feed that into the DME and now potentially we should be good to go. Um, again, what I've done is loaded a stock file off a donor, which this was the donor. And so we had to change that ISN to match the car's ISN. So this, in theory, should be able to start the car. As far as that method, not sure what happened. I'll probably try to investigate, see if I can try it a couple of times, see if I did something wrong.